Hello, it's Ricardo, and welcome back to Elite Dangerous. With the introduction of update 18.02 for Elite Dangerous, we've now been given the new module that follows on from a community goal to collect Titan Drive components. This new module is a Class C frameshift drive that promises a special effect, a supercharged supercruise. Let's take a look. Frontier Developments announced the inclusion into Elite Dangerous of the new Class C frameshift drive. That has a special effect. This special effect being a super cruise supercharge. Now, with any Class C module, we've been hypothesizing the fact that it will be a shorter jump range, but a faster super cruise. Is this going to be the case? And if so, where are you going to get this frameshift drive? And if you can find out where it is, is it the right frameshift drive for you? This could be perfect for addressing the distance from the jumping point to some of the Titans who are a bit more further the field, so to speak. Now this is going to bring the different classes of modules very much into the forefront of what commanders have to consider and what the use case is going to be for this new frameshift drive. If you look at existing modules, Class C or Class D for example, the stats for a frameshift drive, a C, effectively has two thirds of a jump range of a Class A and a D is 60% of a jump range. It's not a huge loss, it is indeed survivable. But to be fair, you're going to need additional components to go with it, like a frameshift drive booster. Or are you just going to use it for a specific set case or purpose? To put this into perspective, if you have a 25 light year jump range with an FSD, um, let's think. Even with class D stats, that means that 25 light years is going to be a 19. That's only a 24% loss. You booster that with a frameshift drive booster, then you're kind of going to be where you were in the first place, I would say, typically. But anyway, let's get on to the module and see what it's all about. Hello, everyone. So here we are at, in, in outfitting. OK, got me Asp Explorer. Uh, and I've got a standard frameshift drive 5C in there. Now, I've got a frameshift drive booster also attached here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to i'm going to store that module just for the benefits of, of what we're doing here so here we go we've got our frameshift drive 5c it's given me 18.31 light years maximum range all right we're going to change this up now and we're going to place that mod module with a frameshift seo edition Okay, Super Cruise Overcharge. Right, here we are. Straight away, what have we got here? Super Cruise Overcharge is available. Maximum fuel per jump 3.3. Optimized mass so it's slightly lighter. The power draw, all that good stuff. Overcharge, max speed increase, 80%. Overcharge, max acceleration rate. So it's quicker. Look at the amount of heat it's going to generate. And also, overcharge control interference. Don't really know what all that's about, right? But it's 0.4. If we look, whilst in this section, at some of the other modules in this area, for example, let's look at, ooh, I don't know, a 7C. Look at that. That's only got a 46% max speed increase. I mean, obviously, you know, we fit this to a different ship, you might have a different story. Um, let's take it out of here into shipyard, into my jumper conda, use that ship. Starport services. Right, we've got 69.84 light years because we have a super duper engineered drive. Now, here we go 6A, that's got all the modifications of increased range on it good for us. If we rip that out, replace that module with a 6A, 6C, sorry, frameshift drive, there's an increase in speed of 62%. 
interesting stuff, no? Look at that heat generation on the bigger units as well. Anyway, let's get back to our good old Asp Explorer. So, here we go everyone, we're in our shiny gold Asp Explorer, heading for the egress of this station. Landing gear retracted. Okay, we're going to wait till we get outside the exclusion zone. If we look over into the left hand panel, I'm just going to jump, makes no difference to me. If we go over to the right hand panel, into modules, all the way down here, frame shift drive SEO, super cruise overcharge, um, down to show info, it's a bit more of a consumable version of the specifications here, uh, of what we've got. We've still got the ability to do a frame shift injection should you want to and that's just going to give you distance nothing to do with speed but you know that is indeed an option you can still do which is great so basic 25% you got you know 50% and you've got the premium this is what I like about it let's go to super cruise frame shift drive charging Right, we're super cruising. Here we go. Isn't that fantastic? Now, if you're wondering how to instigate your super cruise overcharge, you press the engine boost button. And that's not in the instructions anywhere. Let's face it. Warning, frame shift drive operating beyond safety limits. Warning, temperature critical. Warning, taking heat damage. Hull integrity compromised. Press that button again, disengages the Super Cruise Overcharge. Let's just see how far we are away from that station. Well, that's something, isn't it? Um, oh my god, we're 31,000 light seconds away from McDivitt Dock. And that took what? Moments? That was something. That was something. But to be fair, we took a bit of damage. You're going to need an AFMU to repair that sort of damage. I mean, I was dropping heat sinks in that as well. Didn't make an awful lot, <laughs> an awful lot of difference. Here we go again. Right, so I'm 31 light seconds away. Here we go, everyone. I'm pressing the button. Warning. Frame shift drive operating beyond safety limits. Warning. Temperature critical. Warning. Taking heat damage. Heat sink deployed. Multiple malfunction. So look at that, we went the best part of 24,000 light seconds, 25,000 light seconds, incurred a bit of damage, beam lasers are destroying themselves, cool stuff. Press that boost button to engage, super cruise overdrive, press it again to disengage it. This will probably work quite well with a super cruise assist button. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and get one of those now. It was indeed quite interesting to see the amount of jitter we were getting as it was bouncing around a bit. We're going to put a Super Cruise Assist on there and see how we go. We're going to go from one point to another and see how much damage we actually incur on the ship. But like I say, the AFMU looks like it's going to be the key thing to, to do on this. So here we are back at the station. I've bunged in a Super Cruise Assist in there um, straight off the bat so it's also worthwhile mentioning that the smaller the ship the faster you seem to be going uh, if you bang this onto a corvette perhaps you won't be going as fast uh, but like i'm getting an 80 percent speed increase out of this class 5c 
Think of this as nitrous oxide for your spaceship. That's exactly how I'm thinking about it. Now, again, we could put in a frame shift drive booster in there. No dramas. Um, I think with this as well, like I mentioned during the space trial, you're going to need an AFMU. Now, where exactly you put this into some of these ships, I don't know. Probably about by there. But that's going to ensure that, you know, any damage that you incur, you're going to be able to repair. You know, or at least some repair limpets. That's what I'm saying. It's going to make getting to Hutton Orbital an utter breeze. With Super Cruise Assist active, that button does absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. So it has to be a manual engagement of your nitrous oxide for your frame shift drive. So, Super Cruise Assist makes no difference. One thing that does though, I think, is fuel tanks. So before I get to Hutton Orbital to test this out, I am going to be stocking up on some fuel tanks in this ASP Explorer. Okay, I am in Alpha Centauri, and as you can see, I'm right close to the star. This is the jumping point. We've all been here. We all want to get the mug. As they say, I've got a full pack of cigarettes, it's dark, and I'm wearing sunglasses. We've got extra fuel tanks, and we've got our frame shift drive, the new frame shift drive from Achilles Systems, with Super Cruise Overcharge on it. Here we are. Hutton Orbital is 0.21 light years away. We're going to line ourselves up. I'm going to have to go to the other side of the star for this. So it's not going to impact us too much. Gives the opportunity to top off the tank anyway. Right, there you go. There it is. Three pips to the engines. We're accelerating. I'm lining up. Let's go. Warning. Frame shift drive operating beyond safety limits. Warning. Ooh, we're off. I'm dropping heat sinks. They're not doing out of a lot. We are jittering everywhere. Another heat sink. Warning. Hull breach attack. Taking internal damage. Heat sink deployed. Warning. Temperature it's sucking critical. down the fuel. Module malfunction. Module malfunction. Modules are falling off left, right, heat and centre. We've deployed. got an awful lot of. Heat damage. Look at this. Heat sink deployed. We've got it down to about 30 minutes. We're going to run out of fuel. Warning. Taking heat damage. Heat sink deployed. Even with all these fuel tanks. We're at 10%. Module malfunction. And at that point, the frame shift drive overheated. That's going to leave a mark. Oh well, it was good for a test, was it not? Anyway, I've been Ricardo. Thanks very much for watching. Is this something worthwhile to take a look at and spend another few more hundred hours of shipbuilding theory to see what the use case for this is going to be? Let me know what you think in the comments.